other. Um, and when you do some post-test questionnaires, yeah, they can go with what, they, what they've heard of. And so that's the link of that we actually kind of perform this way. So um, the other interesting thing about this is that when you give the simulated subjects more information, um, it winds up hurting their results. They wind up getting overwhelmed, and they don't produce, the, 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 they, their answers aren't as good as take the best. So what this means is that the less information that we have, take the best works better. Some of these bounded rationality heuristics work better in the absence of some information. Um, another example of this is um, one done on actual human subjects. I'm going to read another description to you and describe the study. I'm not going to do it on you because it requires too many words, whatever. And you'll have to excuse the wording of this study. It was written in 1973. Um, Tom W. is of high intelligence, although lacking in true creativity. He has a need for order and clarity and for neat and tidy systems in which every detail finds its appropriate place. His writing is rather dull and mechanical, occasionally enlivened by somewhat corny puns and by flashes of imagination of the sci-fi type. He has a strong drive for competence. He seems to feel little sympathy for other people and does not enjoy interacting with others. Self-centered, he nonetheless has a deep moral sense. Um, and so they told, uh, they, 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 yeah, as I said, really unfortunate description. So they gave subjects a, Okay, so they gave subjects this description, and then they said, okay, so Thomas comes from a pool of uh, a pool of people, and then I'll, I'll have to use this decision trees because it will make, it'll make a lot more sense, because I have a lot of trouble figuring out how the study works when reading it. Uh, and when talking about how two groups perform independently, it's, it's, it's a little difficult. So um, they, they all have this description of Thomas, and then half, half the subjects were told that uh, Thomas came from a pool of people where 70% were lawyers and 30% and were engineers. And the other half were told the opposite. 30% were lawyers and 70% were engineers. And they've done, they did a lot of pre-testing to see does this description call up into people's minds engineer as opposed to lawyer. And it does. I, I, I'm not sure if this description is the exact one they use. This is from a similar study, but it was a description pretty close to what I gave you. So they've got these two subjects now. Uh, then what they did is that they either, is that they gave them information that, the information about other subjects in the pool that either corresponded with the base rate or didn't. And so they gave information about subjects that was more like lawyery. So this is base rate um, cooperative. This is base rate, not cooperative. And they did the same with these. So what they found is that when you gave subjects, uh, when, when, when you gave subjects information about other people in the pool that corresponded with the base rate, they assumed Thomas was that person, regardless of the regardless of the actual base rate. So basically, if, if, if the pool was 70% lawyer and 30% engineers, and I gave you information that was, I'm sorry, it, it wasn't in terms of base rate cooperative or not, it was in terms of lawyer or engineer, like, which is more emblematic of lawyers or engineers. And so when this description corresponded with this description, Very weird study. Um, yeah, so when this description corresponded with this description, subjects were likely to say, regardless of the base rate, Thomas is um, Tom, Tom, Tom Thomas is what that what that stereotypical description would suggest. And so they were irrational, basically. So when you had corroborating information uh, to go along with something, they, some other kind of logical process kicked in. When you had information that directly went against the base rate, or was irrelevant to the base rate, as they did in other studies, or if you didn't have any additional information, 
subjects were more likely to go along with the base rate. And when you don't give any personality, depth, personality description of Thomas, subjects are very much likely to go along with the base rate, which is another important finding that I haven't mentioned up to this point, but should. Like, when you ask people which is more likely, which is a more likely, um, uh, you know, heads or tails, which is more likely, they get it. When you do heads, 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 tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, um, ask them which is more likely. Some really dumb people still pick this as opposed to neutral. Um, interestingly enough about this is that when you ask them which of these is the least likely, people start performing rationally. Again. So the, the, like we, we, we do have some knowledge that like that there are certain statistical questions that we just know because we're asked a lot. So like we know there's a one in six chance of a die falling on any number. But this is all information, this is all fairly new information, relatively speaking. Like thinking about this prob thinking probabilistically isn't something that in, in terms of single outcome probabilities, isn't something really more than a few hundred years old. In, in, and specifically limited to Western culture. This also leads to some problems on getting a bad taste in my mouth. Um, this also leads to some problems when you test foreign kids on SATs about like die rules and stuff. They have no real schema for die rules and things, and so they fuck up. Not because they don't understand this probability stuff, but just because that kind of cue for we should think rationally isn't there. So they screw up. So when it comes to really obvious things like this, you, yeah. As an aside, unless you lost the die at some point, I think the first one is more probable. Oh, these are coin flips. I thought you said six inches, but you said five. No, these, these are just like strings of coin flips. Okay. But I, when you were reading it, I think you read it as six inches and five T H H U. Oh. Sorry. Re reading and letters don't really work. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, where was I going with this? Yeah. So, it, it, it's, it's kind of obvious that when we have these cues for, like, oh, this is a question about probability, you're going to answer in a normative and correct way. But when you limit people's information, and or you make the statistical information uh, discordant with the, uh, with the causal logic or like narrative information, such as the story, people are far more likely to use statistical reasoning. So we've now got some, we, 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 we've now got enough information, and we've got, done enough research to start saying, like, what are the conditions under which no, uh, under which normatively rational statistical reasoning is going to occur. Um, so the counterpoint to that is, when do we think in terms of causal logic, which is again, you know, this. Uh, and and we, we've, we've also seen some information show, we've also seen some, some findings showing that these are different processes, that we think about causal logic differently than we think about statistical logic. So that's an important finding that makes this whole spectrum thing a lot more complicated. But when do we use one versus the other? It seems like we're generally inclined to use causal information, perhaps because it works most of the time, and that Kahneman and Tversky are correct, and that it's the easiest choice, because again, it takes no work to see that that happens, and so we do it. Uh, <clears throat> so we've got rule one, uh, use if-then logic, it feels plausible. And that gets us pretty far most of the time. Um, rule two, when, 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 when things are obviously statistically one way and the causal logic disagrees, ignore causal logic. So when we have strong stats, like ignore, ignore causal, and that's like, when, when you do the really obvious base rate stuff. Um, and you can also alter these uh, ratios and maybe like 90, 10, and you get different results that are more in line with proper statistical reasoning. So um, other rule is that when we have less information, like namely we have less narrative causal information, because all causality is is a form of narrative, um, you, 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 you're, you're going to use statistical reasoning because that's your fallback. So, And then, let's see, is there one more? Yeah, and then the last one is 